Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert and special guest James Lardhag, commander of the Science Cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. When do I get a new name? Soon, James. Yeah, when do we get a new name? It's too long. Once we've done the foundation. I think it's long enough. <laughs> anyway, as always, we're wearing togas, we're eating olives and today we're looking at the first session. Previously on Stupid Ancient History, we've been looking at the impact on Rome of the Walls of Independence. How, usually, as a result of Tarquinius' Superbus' evil schemes <laughs> to get back on the throne, pretty much everyone and their dog tried attacking Rome. And how major conf- the major conflicts of Silvia Arcia, the invasion of Lars Porcena, and the Battle of Lake Regilius the Romans were able to beat off the various invaders. Until finally, after fighting in the Battle of Lake Regilius, Superbus. Dun, dun, dun. What? what? What happened to him? Remind me. <laughs> <laughs> he finally died. Yeah, he was like he was, he was he was ninety. Like you keep saying, like this was a triumph. Like he just died. <laughs> yes. Well, everyone, as you were as well, was extremely happy yeah. that Superbus had finally popped it. But this relief and celebration soon ended, um, ended up being short-lived, as with the impact of these wars, this had created a significant tension within Rome. Which later became known as the Conflict of the Orders. It's just a very poetic way of saying rich people mean to poor people. Yeah. All right, calm down, Karl Marx. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So Taylor said earlier that like everyone in the mum has had a crack at Rome at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, what state are they in? Because it can't be good. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's not good, but it's also it's not the case that there's no threat left to Rome. People are still people after are them. still at them. Well, right, they're still okay. in that two hundred year war. That's <laughs> I forgot about James. that. He's not finished yet. <laughs> still going. They'd forgotten about it as well. <laughs> so yeah, just can, because... you just can you just let me know when that ends? <laughs> um, the course finishes before that war. No, oh, I thought I thought we'd continue in. Like at some point, it's over. No, it may still be going on. Um, anyway, just because Superbus is dead, it doesn't mean that it's all over. There's still threats to Rome, and understandably, this is having quite a serious impact on the people of Rome. They can't just sit back and think, "Glad that's all over. That was annoying." Um, or as Livy puts it, "But a war with the Volscians was close, and the state was torn with internal arguing." The patricians and the plebeians were bitterly hostile to one another, owing mainly to the desperate condition of the debtors. They loudly complained that whilst fighting in the field for liberty and empire, they were oppressed and enslaved by their fellow citizens at home. Their freedom was more secure in war than in peace, safer amongst the enemy than amongst their own people. So it's like the war debts we were talking about last time. Angry, aren't they? Had enough. Yeah, safer on the battlefield, getting stabbed by people. Well, yeah, they got very po- they got very poetic in the battlefield. They were the the flower of nobility, flower and now, of now they're just the people who want money off me. Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, plus with this ongoing threat of war, it just makes things worse. And there's this issue again between this conflict of the orders and the war debt, and this it seems is really brought to a head by a very unusual sight in the Roman Forum. What's this going to be? I mean, we've had whispering woods. Yeah. People with their heads on fire, birds, <laughs> birds, all sorts. Over to Livy. So he says, an old man bearing visible proofs of all the evils he had suffered suddenly appeared in the forum. His clothing was covered with filth. His personal appearance was made still more desperate by a corpse-like pale appearance and starvation. His unkempt beard and hair made him look like a savage. Oh, <laughs> that, that's much tamer than I was expecting. We weren't expecting that, were you? No. A raggedy old man. Basically, it's how a lot of people are going to look after lockdown, isn't it? Before Pretty they can get to dis- the barbers. Describes me, apart from the thin and wasting part. So some random old blokes turned up at the forum. Yep. It's not as exciting as I was expecting, to well, be honest. There's more to him than might, you might see. I hope so. Mm. So this is what Libby says. He stated that while serving in the Sabine War, he had not only lost the produce of his land through the plundering of the enemy, but his farm had been burned, all his property stolen, his cattle driven away, the war tax demanded when he was least able to pay it, and he had got into debt. Right, that's not good. No. It gets worse. It does get worse. Of course it does. 
This debt had been vastly increased through interest and had stripped him first of his father's and grandfather's farm, then some of his other property, and at last, like a disease, had reached his person. He had been carried off by his creditor, not into slavery only, but into an underground workshop, a living death. Then he showed his back scored with recent marks of the lash. Right, he's a shocker of a time, yeah, hasn't no, he? No, no, <laughs> not good. No, not the best of times, no. Um, so obviously the appearance of this old man, um, this former war hero, he causes a bit of a stir in Rome, and more and more people pile into the forum to come and see what's going on. I mean, they do love a bit of drama and gossip, don't they? <laughs> they do. It's and like a lot of neck, neck <coughs> curtain twitching. Yeah. <laughs> don't think the Romans invented that, but let's pretend they did. I like that idea. Um, and either through general outrage or more likely seeing their own situation in this guy's predicament, um, this ever-increasing crowd become an angry protest with people rushing into the streets, joining in, partly to find out what's going on, partly because they think, oh yeah, no, that's right, not, not right. Or maybe describe the scene like this. Everyone was eager to join the angry mob. Numerous bodies ran shouting through all the streets to the forum. Those of the senators who happened to be in the forum and fell in with the mob were in greater danger of their lives. Excellent. Sorry, I'm happy the word mob has come up. Protest! Because you, you said angry protest. I'm like, oh, I was hoping for a mob. Good old Livy's giving yeah, me a mob. He's giving you a mob. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's quite. The reason we didn't use the word mob is, um, even though Livy uses it, it's important to point out that there's conflicting views about what happens here. Okay. So, on one hand, some writers like Dionysus of Halicarnassus portray it as a very violent kind of a rampage Livy mentions very little in terms of organized violence it's just more like really angry people in the street okay like, shouting at cats and that kind of thing so it's likely that there was some kind of lick off That's kick off <laughs> kick off you can really lick you... kick off <laughs> maybe they were licking things as well <laughs> as they usually <laughs> sorry as they usually is with these things but Dionysus's account may well have been more rooted in the fear that the patricians would have had about potential violence to come. Right, they were worried if all the plebs yeah. rampage. I suppose yeah. it's a bit like the kind of the build up to like the French Revolution, isn't it, where people just start getting really, really panicked. I, th I think yeah. I think I've asked this before, but how? What was the ratio of plebs to patricians? Lots more plebs than patricians. Yeah. Okay. Lots, so they should more. be worried, shouldn't they? Really, they've certainly got the. The manpower to be able you do. to also the, the very kind of the unmannered masses are out on the street. Mm. Yeah, and they, yeah, they will look like a quite intimidating sight, but there's certainly no real evidence that they were like ripping people to pieces and stamping on things. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> <was gonna> <laughs> don't stamp on things. Well, they didn't, so that's all right. So there's angry mobs in the streets. Stamping on things, licking things, according <laughs> to you two. Uh, what we know the... our stuff. <laughs> uh, do the senators just lick it with all these angry people? <laughs> to be fair, you can imagine, Kate, if this is obviously not what happened, but you can imagine if there was like a crowd of hundreds of people stamping, stamping on things. And like licking each other. You would run away. I would, you, I would. You'd be like, what the hell is going on? I'm going. What are you on about? That sounds like my family get together. <laughs> well, you are from Bradford, oh, no. that's all I'm going to say. So anyway, the Senate turned to the consuls to try and calm everything down because they're good with stampy people. Because <laughs> <laughs> <You must be. laughs> um, their position still holds a great deal of authority. Who are the consuls at this point? So these two men called Appius Claudius and Civilius, but we're going to talk about them a bit more later. Okay. <laughs> So the consuls enter the forum, mm -hmm. everyone stops stamping on things, uh, they see them, and... They rip them apart. Not quite, no, oh. sorry. No. Livy? So the crowd surged around them, showed their chains and other marks of degradation. These, they said, were their rewards for having served their country. Fair play. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, even though the plebs are furious at the patricians and those who've effectively enslaved them, they still see the consuls as kind of being the best way to get justice. Okay. Yeah, but there's a problem. Of course there is. <laughs> yeah, so all of the disturbances, because of them, a lot of the Senate are kind of boarded up in their homes and they won't actually come to the Senate house because they're too scared. Okay, <laughs> so imagine if everyone's stamped on rampaging around that. Westminster and everyone's too frightened to go to the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this means it's impossible for the consuls to get the Senate to address 
the problem because they're not core. They don't have enough. I was, I was, I was going to ask, like, how how many senators need to be there for you, it to you'd be? You need at least a third. Right. Okay. So yeah, they're not core. Um, and this delay, though, rather than going, oh yeah, fair enough, we'll let them in. This does not go down well with the plebs. So, Libby says, sorry, uh, the people began to think that they were being played with and put off, that the absent senators were not kept away by accident or by fear, but in order to prevent any justice for their grievances and that the consuls themselves were laughing at their misery. Right, so... so not going down well then. So in them locking themselves away, they're just making things worse. Yeah, yeah basically. So, when enough of the Senate do actually turn up, they're able to hold a meeting, and it seems the two consuls actually have very different ideas about what to do next. <laughs> yeah, so Appius Claudius, a man of passionate character, was of the opinion that the matter ought to be settled by a display of authority on the part of the consuls. Meaning what? Just they, they Send in the army. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, this, but aren't, like aren't the army Lord. mostly plebs? Some are. Some right. aren't. Right, okay. You obviously choose which ones. Mm. On the other hand... Servilius was more inclined to gentle measures. He thought that when men's passions are aroused, it was safer and easier to bend them back... To, sorry, to bend them than to break them. Okay, so... so be nice to them. Yeah, be nice. So they've, so they've got... Crush! So they've got crush them into a fine powder and softly, softly yeah. be nice. Wh who, which way do they go? Well... Neither. They did the, the middle route. They hit them and they apologise. No. no. Um, before they can decide, riders arrive in Rome to inform the, 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 the Volsci have attacked Rome. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and just, I mean, the news, however, simply adds further weight to the plebs' argument and strengthens their resolve. Again, as Livy puts it. The plebeians were joyful. They said that the gods were preparing to avenge the tyranny of the patricians. They encouraged each other to refuse enrolment, for it was better for all to die together than to perish one by one. Let the patricians take up arms, let the patricians serve as common soldiers, that those who get the spoils of war may share its perils. Fair enough. Okay. I so mean, yeah, it's very, very much logical. case of, well, I'm not bloody fine, but yeah, yeah. do it. Mm, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. But not good, given that the Volsci are attacking. Yeah, they, they also did basically say, like, yeah, let's all get slaughtered together, then die, like, be picked off little by little yeah. on the battlefield. Uh, if I hadn't have actually been there, <laughs> I would have guessed this would be like the end of Rome then. If everyone's saying like, you know what, just leave it. And the, the who was it? The, the plebs. Oh, the, the Volsci. The Volsci. They can have it. <laughs> Yeah. It's not though. I, yeah, I know because yeah. I've been there. <laughs> no, but it would. You think this would be the end? It's, it's like, it sounds quite like, definitive. Nah, sick of this, just sit down. So, um, yeah. Luckily for the Romans, uh, Servilius. That the, was what he wanted to calm. The calm. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's a pretty charismatic chap, and he manages to convince the plebs to take up arms and fight. How does he do that? <laughs> well, he's quite crafty because while he's saying, "Come on, lads, you know, sort yourselves out, stop stamping on things, and <laughs> stop licking that." Um, he does throw in a little caveat into his speech to judge them up, and he says... It would not be honourable on the part of the plebeians to refuse to take up arms for their country till they had been paid for doing so, nor would it be honourable for the, of the Senate to be motivated by fear rather than by goodwill in relieving their distressed fellow citizens. OK, so join the army, we'll pay off your debts. That's basically what I took away from that. Yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, seems like a good idea. Yeah. Uh, did it work? Well, Servilius gets his army. They join. Yeah. Everything's good. They lead their army out of Rome to where the enemy were attacking. Um, they engage with the Volsci. And Livy just quickly describes the battle like this. The enemy fled at the very first attack and were cut down <laughs> as far as the What's the point? Could pursue them. <laughs> Then the cavalry drove them in confusion to their camp. They evacuated it in their panic. The legions soon came up, surrounded it, captured and plundered it. Well, that no, there you go. Didn't go well. <laughs> it, it's a shame you couldn't actually see James's face. That was throughout that. so they they started this. It's not like the Romans surprised them. No, they they went and started the war, and then they just ran away immediately. <laughs> yeah. Right, that's 
a waste of everyone's time. But, yeah. you know, you would think, wouldn't you, that that is quite good for Rome and the plebs? Uh, well, yeah, they've, they've managed to wipe their debt without actually having to do any much fighting. And won a battle, which yeah. is always good. Yeah, so Civilius and his army kind of return to Rome expecting to be heroes and kind of having the debts cancelled. Win-win. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, when they get back to Rome... All does not go as planned. Uh, you know what? I did think it would. <laughs> <laughs> so Livy begins to explain the situation like so. Appius Claudius, partly from his love of tyranny and partly to undermine any confidence felt in his colleague, gave the harshest sentences he could when debtors were brought before him. His love of tyranny? I thought that was what Romans <laughs> hated. <laughs> That's it, it's what they hated. But tyranny's back on the table, it seems. Okay. <laughs> Taylor? So, yeah, while Civilius was serving a kind of saving Rome, should I say, Appius Claudius was busy making sure he kind of got his way. Yeah. So jerky one who wanted to kill them all anyway. Has... Yeah, while while Civilis is off doing his hero thing, yeah. he's there in the Senate going, me, 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 It's very much good <laughs> cop, bad cop, isn't it? Taken to the extreme. And it's well, good cop, massive douche. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, he points out to the Senate while Civilis is away. And obviously when Civilis comes back, he points it out to him as well. Yeah. After everyone's agreed. That even though he was consul, he's only one of the consuls, um, but even still he ha- does not have the right to cancel plebeian debt without the full agreement of the Senate. Right, okay. This sounds like this is complicated. <laughs> well, not really. The Senate owes so, most of the debt. So They don't want to give away the money. How, how, how does that work then? Is it a majority rule if Senate yeah. votes on stuff? Yeah, pretty much. So, so. He's, he's promised something he can't deliver. Civilius has um, promised them something to appease the situation without realising just how tight and I'm, Appius Claudius is. And I'm guessing yeah. the Senate aren't keen to wipe the debt. No, not a chance. And, and to make things worse for Civilius, the plebs are now kind of gathered around the Senate house expecting good news. <laughs> Uh-oh. But Civilius, he's bound by the law and he has to go out and he has to tell the plebs, Joe, you know what, lads? Yes. Sorry. You know, I said I could clear your debts. Turns out I can't. You'd send someone else to do it. Yeah. He does it himself. Get him! Uh, I'm assuming a massive riot ensues. <laughs> you would have thought so. Uh, you know, a lot, a, a, lot, a lot of licking. Oh, God. A lot of licking and a lot of stamping. stamping. Um, but it doesn't seem so. It was kind of more general dismay. Plus the fact that the army was still hanging around. General dismay. It sounds like so, tutting. Oh. Oh. Yeah, um, it may also have not come to a head as well because both consuls are due to step down anyway. Oh, it's so the end of their term. Yeah, so they're like, oh, maybe we don't kick off because, you know, these guys are going. Or as Livy, I mean, Livy describes the situation like this. At length, the consuls, detested as they were by the plebs, went out of office. Civilius equally hated by both orders, Appius Claudius in wonderful favour with the patricians. <laughs> So Civilius wanted to try favor. to do kind of something nice. It yeah. backfires on him and yeah. And everyone hates him. And everyone, everyone hates, hates him. him. Because the patricians oh, love Claudius because they've still got all their cash. They, yeah, they still have their fat stacks. That's a shame. So Pleb's still in debt. Yep. Still angry with Senate and yep. consoles. Generally angry before this anyway. Yep. Now do they kick off? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's true. there's technically not been a secession yet. What, a strike? Yeah, all right, there's yeah, not been a strike, a strike yet. Okay. Yeah, but the resignation of the two consuls didn't put an end to the issue. So the plebs soon started having secret meetings and gatherings, probably because they were still no better off and they didn't feel yeah, like anyone nothing was changed. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the Senate was still deeply worried about the threat of the plebs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but handily, the Sabines attacked. <laughs> How's that handy? Well, it kind of, you know... Diverts their attention, well, I suppose. Are they in that part room at this point? I thought they'd been it, like... They seem to have drifted off. Right, okay. Yeah. So, rather than kind of brother... But sorry, ra- rather than bother with two consuls, or with consuls, the Senate appointed a dictator. Oh, great. So they've now got like a full circle, basically. So they, so they had a consul <laughs> who loved tyranny. <laughs> and then now a dictator. Now a dictator. <laughs> so they appointed a dictator called Publius uh, Valerius... Okay. And he could also kind of be used to crush the rebellion as well. But he can't fight the Sabines without an army. Well, he can use the army against the Sabines and then 
the rebels. Anyway, but right, yeah, okay. you're right. As before, he has to persuade the plebs to fight the Sabines. Um, again, by telling them that he agreed with the idea of debt relief. I can't believe that they fell for that again. Maybe so, I was hoping he can actually do it. Yeah, he's they, dictator. Well, they went off, fought the Sabines, and returned to Rome. And all their debts were cleared. Yeah, but <laughs> no, that's... You, no, no. Appius oh. Claudius again denied them debt relief, so Valerius resigns in protest. But what? at least the plebs didn't hate him. I mean, yeah. you say that, but... I'd be how, pretty how, angry. how can Appius deny the debt again? Again, he uses the same argument, the Senate haven't agreed it. So now he's just Senator, now he's not Consul. Yeah. And he's still causing trouble. He is. Lovely stuff. So it's twice in a row now they've been told to have their debt scrapped, and they've not. Please tell me they kick off. Yes, they do. Yeah, Yay! finally. <laughs> so the army are not yet dissolved properly, um, just in case the plebs do kick off. Um, but it's actually one of the former soldiers, a man called Sicinius, who comes up with a plan. Okay. Mm. So Livy says, on learning that no religious obligation could be dissolved by a crime, they decided, at the suggestion of a certain Sicinius, to ignore the consuls and withdraw to the sacred mount, which lay on the other side of the Anio, three miles from the city. Okay. So, so follow, well, following Sicinius's lead, large numbers of the plebs <coughs> excuse me and a fair chunk of the army they leave Rome and they go and set up camp on this sacred mound okay what this is this is the strike ah this, this this is them putting down tools yeah they're literally downing tools I mean they have nothing left to take back so the plebs now refuse to work in or for Rome mm -hmm. so they are withdrawing their labour they're like no see you later mate I'm going to sit on that hill there's not a damn <laughs> thing you can do about it yeah and this obviously didn't go down well with the senate because there was now no one left to do any work they and they're not going to do it they me. can do it themselves I'm sure they know no. how to till a field <laughs> no um but also the the issue, the fact that those who own, owed the money, you know, the the debt, the creditors in this situation, all the debts just wandered off up the hill. <laughs> you know, there goes their payday, there goes their money. So they're not happy either. And Livy describes the situation like this. A great panic seized the city. Mutual distrust led to a state of universal suspense. Ooh. That's just quite Sounds poetic. Good. I like that. Yeah. Those plebeians who had been left by their comrades in the city feared violence from the patricians. The patricians feared the plebeians who still remained in the city and could not make up their minds whether they would rather have them stay or go. Okay. So, he, so. it's really like split Rome in two now. Yeah, literally. Uh, so how does the Senate break this strike? Just sending the army? Oh wait, half of it's already <laughs> the there. Little bit they've got. <laughs> That'd be overkill that a little bit, wouldn't it? <laughs> or just insipid kill. <laughs> you five in the army who are still here. Off you go. Uh, no, instead they send a single man to no, negotiate. Oh. A guy called Menenius Agrippa. You would not want to be him, would you? <laughs> I'm not uh, well. Who, who's Memeni there? Memenius. Menenius. I'm not saying that. Who's Agrippa? <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, he's very persuasive, apparently, according to living and charismatic, and he started life as a plebeian and was raised to the rank of a patrician. Oh, so you can move. You can, there, you, you yeah. Know. It's very unlikely, though. But there is some... There is obviously some... There is some social mobility. Yeah. It's just okay. very limited. Yeah, so they have this idea, then, that the plebs are going to have more time for this guy because he, he is being... He's one of he's them. One he's one of them. He's, he, he's he down with the plebs. The streets. Yeah, he's down with the plebs. <laughs> he's a ruffian. Not Bit anymore. Rough. Right, okay. Yeah. So he, he was from East Manchester, but now he lives in Cheshire. Whatever. <laughs> so Menenius tootles off to the sacred mound and begins convincing the plebs to return. So he likens their position to different parts of the body, that Rome cannot function without them just as a body cannot function without a stomach. Okay. Is that it from science to uh, Stomachs are very important, but it's quite a passive organ. You're not in control of it. Yeah, um, but again, don't forget, the, the Romans at this time, not great on their anatomy. True, and I, I guess he didn't really want to refer to them as like, you know, the back that holds up the, <laughs> no. the public, because otherwise they'd, uh, they'd just be you know, giving him too much credit. Yeah. Yeah, and any reference to the digestive tract is just going to cause more problems <laughs> than it solves. So anyway, he persuades the plebs to enter in negotiations with the Senate 
despite and guess who do you think who do you think doesn't like this? Oh, that happiest bloke. Yeah, despite his <laughs> protest, he's like, no, we're not having negotiations. Yeah, so he thinks they should just be replaced by people from the Latin regions. I mean, is he going to give people the choice to be, you know, brought in to replace the people that have gone? I just like go to these areas and go. Come on! <laughs> Do you know what? Given it's happiest Claudius, probably the latter. Mm. Um, so through these negotiations, not only do the plebs decide they are going to return, partly because no one's listening to Claudius anymore, mm -hmm. which is nice, um, but the Senate also has agreed to set up the Tribune of the Plebs to protect plebeian rights. What's yeah. the Tribune of the Plebs? That's next week's episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's the end of the first secession. There's, hey. there's, is there going to be a second secession? Shh. So, key issues coming out of the kind of first secession. I mean, the first one obviously is this idea of war debt. It really is a problem, um, and it's really driven to a head at this point. Yeah, but there's also the kind of lack of rights for the plebs, isn't there as well? That's yeah. a key the, issue. <laughs> the, yeah, you can't separate the two. If the plebs had rights, they wouldn't be in this position. Um, and again, you've got these two views in Rome, which are really quite neatly summed up uh, in the two consuls, mm. almost as if Livy it, just wrote it. As if it's a yeah. narrative device. Yeah, yeah, to represent each kind of side of the argument. Yeah, so you've got Appius Claudius, who's a hardcore patrician, doesn't want to give up his money, doesn't want to give up anyone else's money, plebs can just go and be on fire. At the same time, you've got Servilius, who's a bit more, more of a reformer, more liberal, he's enjoying... The service of the plebs a bit more that's yeah. not really wrong but well, you probably did to be fair all right i'm not going right. to wow. a dead guy who can't defend himself but he's certainly more open to working with the plebs yeah and he wasn't a massive fan of tyranny well funnily you should say i mean the next thing we've got to look at is yeah tyranny's back on the table <laughs> that one thing the romans are obsessed with this kind of the shadow of tyranny through claudius so how did do we know how the Senate reacted to him basically like, yeah, it's great, isn't it, one person being in charge? Well, I mean, I think the suggestion is they're more interested in their money. Right, okay. Um, so again, if you look at these ideas of continuity and change, you know, even though they're trying, tyranny is still an issue. But you hmm. start to get as well, tyranny is very much used at key points as a vehicle by people for kind of to help society isn't mm. it that's how they package it anyway it's not so much i want to be a tyrannical leader because i, I just want to, to be, be in the... charge i'm doing right, it for okay. the good of the people so it's almost at certain times people can see well actually now might be a good time for us to, for us to have a strong a leader. strong leader is that the point of the dictator it, it's yeah. kind of they kind of like can't it's if they can't quite let go completely of this mm. idea of of kingship and having one person in charge but they just don't want to call it king because that mm. brings back Super too many really horrendous memories. So as long as you've got a bit of representation, they're not that Probably they could come up with another word for it. <laughs> well. Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've got the continuity, the tyranny, this um, relationship between patricians and plebs has got much worse, even though this is a relationship apparently established by Romulus. And then we get the secession, mm. sitting on a hill. Seems to have some effect. Well, yeah. I mean, it's certainly the first time the Romans ever has ever done something quite as passive as sitting down. Yeah, far cry from like the Romulus days. Yeah, they're fighting each other with triplets and yeah. stabbing your daughter because she cried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all changed from there. But again, the war debt is still the big issue. So there you have it, our quick look at the first session. Thank you for listening. We hope it has been useful. Leave us a comment below and until next time, goodbye. Bye. Bye.